Number one says an arithmetic sequence starts with the terms two and five. So arithmetic means that we know that we have repeated addition or subtraction. So when we're looking at this, we know that the common difference is to add three. So when we write a recursive definition for this, we need to write our first term, okay? So our first term is two, so a of one is two. Then we write it in general for any term. So a of n, meaning whatever term we're looking for, is gonna be equal to the previous term, okay? So the term n minus one, so in the previous slot, um, and then plus three in this case. Okay, so our previous term plus three, and then we also say that this is for any term greater than or equal to two because we started with the first one, okay, we gave the first one, so then we would use this formula starting at the second term. Now it says use this um, definition to create a table of values um, and then find A of six, okay, so let's do a table of values up through term six. So I'm just going to make the table of values horizontal like this. So this is going to be our term number, and this is going to be our um, actual term. So our term 1 is 2. That was given to us. Okay, so then let's find um, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, and term 6. All right, so then term two is actually given to us at five as well, so then we'll find three. So we're gonna take the previous term plus three, right? So previous term plus three is eight. Our fourth term is gonna be eight plus three, which is 11. Our fifth term is gonna be 11 plus three, which is 14. And our sixth term is gonna be 14 plus three, which is 17. So A of six is equal to 17. Number two gives us a geometric sequence that starts with one and three as the first two terms. So remember geometric means that we have repeat multiplication or division. So in this case, one to get to three would be multiplying by three. So our growth factor um, or common ratio here is three. So writing a recursive formula Again, we'll start with our first term. So our a sub one term is one. Okay, so it's this first term given. Then we're gonna generalize it for every term after that. So then any term after that is gonna be equal to the previous term. Okay, and we say that as n minus one because if we're looking for the third term, we'll look at the three minus one term or the second term. And we're gonna multiply by three in this case. And then again, this is for any term greater than or equal to two because we gave the first term. So then we're gonna use this formula for the second term and higher. So now this one wants us to sketch a graph for the first five terms. Okay, so we're gonna um, end up graphing, but let's get the first five terms first. Okay, so we've got one and then three, and then times three is nine times three is 27, times three is 81. So the um, Y value or the vertical kind of axis here is gonna need to go up to 81. So I'm gonna put this at 50 and I'm gonna put this at 100. And then this axis here is our term number. Okay, so like this is term number one, this is term number two, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, so I'll put one, two, three, four, five here, and then we'll plot these points. So our first term is at one. Well, this is 50, so one is really low here. Two is at three, again, still really low. Three is at nine. So like if I split this into five equal pieces, that would be 10. So that's still pretty low here. Four is at 27, that's about halfway because halfway would be 25, okay? And then our fifth term is at 81, halfway between 50 and 100 is 75. So this is gonna be a little more than halfway. So there's those points 
plotted. Explain how you would use the curse, um, recursive definition to determine the 30th term. Don't actually calculate it. Okay, but how would we do that? We would need to take the first term, okay, and multiply by three, not 30 times, okay, because to get to the first term, or the sorry, the second term, we multiply by three once, multiply by three twice, multiply by three three times, multiply by three four times. So we would multiply by three 29 times in order to get to that 30th term. So we would take the first term, which is um, one in this case, and multiply by three 29 times. Number three, match each sequence with one of the recursive definitions, only the part of the definition showing the relationship um, between the current and previous is given, so they don't like tell you the first term. Um, but so let's just look at these rules first. So this one says we're gonna multiply by one third. Okay, so our growth factor is one third, which means it's gonna look like dividing by three. This next one um, has us minusing four. Okay, so we're just gonna subtract four. So this is giving us a common ratio, um, but what you're gonna be seeing is subtracting four. Um, this one is multiplying by five. Okay, and then this one is going to be adding the term number. Okay, so adding the term number. So let's go ahead and, and look at these. Okay, so this one, um, 3 to 15, 15 to 75. This one is multiplying by 5. Okay, that was number 3. So this one is number 3. This one is going down, okay, and it's going down by a significant gap, and then it's getting smaller. So this is 18 divided by 3, 6 divided by 3, 2 divided by 3. So this is multiplying by 1 third. So this is number 1. This one is going, um, looks like maybe multiply by 2, multiply by 2, but then this isn't multiply by 2. Okay, and it's not add one, so let's leave this one and check D. So D is going down, okay, this is going down by four, down by four, down by four. So this is minus four, that's number two. So we've got number one, number two, and number three used. So that must mean that this C takes the previous term plus the term number. So this is our second term. Um, and so we're gonna take um, the previous term plus the term. So one plus one is two, two plus two is four, four plus um, three, because this is the third term number. So four plus three is seven. So this is giving us number four. Number four, write the first five terms of each sequence, okay? So this is starting with a one, and then we're just multiplying by three, okay? So one times three is three, three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, 27 times three is 81. Next one, okay, first term is one, and then we're just going to add a negative two, okay? So even if it's out front here, it's negative two plus the previous term, okay? So we can still just think of the term minus two. So one minus two is negative one, negative one minus two is negative three, negative three minus two is negative five, and negative five minus two is negative seven. Next one, okay, starting term is one again. This time we're going to multiply by 2 and then add 1. So 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30, plus 1 is 31. 
Okay, next one starts at one again, and now it says we're gonna take the previous term squared and then add one. So we're gonna do one squared, which is one, and then add one, which is two. Two squared, which is four, add one, which is five. Five squared, which is 25, add one, which is 26. 26 squared, okay, which is um, 676, and then add one is 677. So not these numbers, it's just my middle step, okay, but those. Then this last one um, starts at one, and now we're taking the previous term, and then we're doing two times n minus two. Okay, so let's um, put some blanks in here. So this is term number two, three, four, and five, okay? So we're taking the previous term, which is one. Okay, I'm just gonna do my work over here. And then plus two times the term number, so I'm plugging in two, and then minus two. So one plus four minus two. So one plus four is five, minus two is three. Next one, we're gonna do the previous term, which is three plus two times the term number, which is three, minus two. So three plus six minus two. So that's nine minus two, which is seven. So we're gonna do previous term seven plus two times the term number, which is four, minus two. So seven plus eight minus two. 15 minus two is 13. Last one is gonna be the previous number, 13, plus two times the term, which is five minus two. So 13 plus 10 minus two. So that's 23 minus two is 21. All right, then number five, a sequence has a first term of 120 and a second term of 60. Determine the next two terms if it's an arithmetic sequence, then write a recursive definition that matches the sequence in this form. Okay, so if it's arithmetic, that means it's gonna add or subtract to get to the next term. So this is minus 60. Okay, so then we're gonna minus 60 from 60 and we'll get zero. Okay, so we have our first term is 60, our second term, or sorry, our first term is 120, our second term is 60, minus 60 is zero, minus 60 again is negative 60. So in this form, we've got our first term is 120. Any term is equal to the previous term plus negative 60. Then determine um, the next two terms if it's geometric. So remember, geometric is through multiplication or division. So we've got 120 and then 60, that's half. Okay, that's dividing by two. So then we'll do half of 60, which is 30, and half of 30, which is 50, or sorry, 15. So in this case, we're starting at 120 and we're multiplying by a factor of one half to get each of the next terms. Then number six, we have one hour after an antibiotic is administered, the bacteria population is one million. Each following hour, it decreases by a factor of one half. Complete the table with the given times. So we started at a million, after an hour it should be half as much. So half of one million is 500,000, 
after another hour, it's cut in half again. So 250,000. After another hour, it's cut in half again. So 125,000. After another hour, it's cut in half again. So 62,500. And then in half again, 31,250. Do the bacteria population make a geometric sequence? Explain how you know. So yes, because we're multiplying by a half each time. Okay, so the previous term is multiplied by one half.